on, on um, trying to find a way to, to get uh, service center, you know, to full offset. Um, and like I was hoping, um, we are going to be able to get to 100%. Um, and, you know, with a little bit to spare there, um, and, and it, we're leaving over 50% of that roof space available. Um, and basically what, what we're looking at is um, 142 kilowatts. Um, and that would be 100% offset. Um, and it's going to be uh, producing um, roughly 161,562 kilowatt hours um, a year. Um, we did model this off of 2020, um, just because, you know, we, we know consumers, that's, that's what they're going to look at, you know, um, so that's what we targeted um, to match. Um, and then, you know, as far as some of the, um, you know, material and stuff, um, we, we did, and, and I think um, Laura, Leroy had mentioned this to you, but um, we were able to determine that we don't have to replace the distribution panel and the service off of the transformer which is huge um, just because it is a, an older building. I think that distribution panels from 1986. So um, there was a little bit of a concern there that that would you know, increase costs uh, a lot. But um, luckily we're able to combine a few um, breakers and stuff and we have space for that full 142 kilowatts. Um, and it, it appears that we could actually potentially double up system size um, if needed. Um, and then we did stay away from that northeast corner, which was, I, I, I believe, um, potentially where an expansion would go to increase building square footage. Um, and so we didn't want uh, to be in the way of that. While also, I, don't, I think you guys know there's those big pine trees on that front south face. They're a lot bigger in person than they even really look um, on Google. Uh, so we, we made those extra high uh, in this in the um, simulation just to, to account for even additional growth and then move the whole array back off of those um, to, to keep that really good irradiance throughout. So yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's set up in a way that allows for expansion if needed. It allows for the um, building addition to happen without having to you know, move the system or anything. Um, and we're lucky enough to not have to mess with the actual distribution panel and the underlying electrical, um, you know, feed it to the building, um, which which is huge because that really helps to, to keep costs on. So I think you know we're going to be under budget, um, which was which was the goal. Um, so yeah, uh, it's 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 really an ideal setup. Um, and I'm excited to to send you guys um, you know, kind of the full uh, proposal. It's uh, you know quite extensive, sort of just going through everything. Um, but uh, some of the, you know, more maybe exciting um, parts about this is that, you know, this is a bigger system than the fire station. So it's, it's you know, bigger impact um, for, you know, not only the sustainability plan, um, but, you know, for the climate in general, just some of those cool highlights, um, you know, one would be 74,270 trees, that would be the carbon offset, or uh, 2,374 acres of U.S. forest. Um, those are Two of my favorite uh, kind of statistics, or another one would be six thousand seven hundred and thirty-six barrels of oil. So, um, yeah, and, and and then also um, we are, um, and, you know, obviously if if um, anything wanted to be adjusted, that's fine. Um, but we we do like those Silfab panels that are made in North America, um, and there is a commercial version of those. Um, that's the four hundred watt, um, and the nice thing about those is that you still get that thirty-year power output warranty. Um, by going to them, you know, a lot of the commercial panels, you can get some of the, you know, they're bigger uh, wattage, um, but they're, they're overseas and they, they do um, come with a much, you know, shorter power output warranty. And, um, you know, obviously this is for a long-term um, power source for the service center. So we, we want that, that warranty attached to it. Um, yeah. So it, it, you get that full 25 year material warranty, full 30 year power output, but it comes with the 400 watt. Um, it's, it's not as all black framing as the, um, fire station. Um, but you know, this isn't, um, as visible, um, you know, obviously, um, and you get kind of more bang for your buck when you get the 72 cell modules. Um, and you know, so yeah, overall, um, I mean, this was kind of an I ideal setup. I was really happy as we went through it, that it started to come together and it looked like we could come in under budget, get to full offset. Um, and then also we're going to be sizing, um, what we're proposing is sizing up the uh, conduit 
as well. So then if um, a system addition or expansion was ever needed for say EV chargers, um, you know, we could actually then just feed into that existing conduit and um, just kind of like a, you know, a seamless um, wire addition, which will save a ton of cost instead of, you know, long-term having to rerun all that conduit. So yeah, the design looks a bit different now after we actually were able to get out there and look at all of the obstructions in person, also determining that that kind of, you know, east corner or northeast corner could potentially be expanded upon. So we stayed away from that. Um, and those trees were bigger uh, in person um, than they appear. So we stayed off that too. So basically what you're seeing behind you, Leroy, the array is essentially um, a rectangle that's all the way up in that north corner, um, straight up. Um, and then, and then you know, basically um, facing, um, you know, southeast, but in line with, with the building, obviously. And we gave, you know, extra room for setbacks. And there's still over 50% roof space there. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it couldn't have really been a better setup. So um, I'll plan to, you know, kind of, get this the entire thing together and do like a Google share with you or something, drop uh, a box share with you, Leroy, and then you can see the document in its entirety. Um, and then, you know, at that point, maybe we can set up something with Dan and, and Derek to sort of go over everything, um, you know, whenever you guys like. Um, so yeah, uh, really, really excited. I, I was, I, I was happy to see that uh, we're able to get that, you know, the entire building offset, um, you know, with, with some uh, room to spare. Um, it, not only on the on the building itself, but in the budget. So, um, cool. yeah, uh, be, kind of best case scenario. Really. Nice job. Yeah. So Rob, excited any, to get that to you. What questions do people have, Roger? Rob, is this going to be a uh, inverter, uh, microinverter, or optimizer system? Um. So, so here's the thing, and I mean, we can we can, you know, look to micros or optimizers if you want. Right now, these this would be quoted with rapid shutdown where they would be on 17 panel strings because it is 355 panels. Um, and that's okay. even with the 400 watt panels. Okay. You know, really, once you get over 100 kilowatts, you usually don't go with micros and optimizers just because yeah. it adds a ton of cost. Exactly. Um, exactly. That would probably push it over budget. Um, the other thing too is that, you know, we don't have intermittent shading with these. I mean, it, it's pretty wide open once we get it pushed to that north corner. You know, so the the panels being on 17 panel strings isn't going to be detrimental like it would be on a residential house, you know, where you have a lot more consistent shading with, you know, trees or whatever it is. Um, plus, you know, panel level monitoring is, is less necessary when you have 355 panels, you know, you can right. monitor it um, inverter to inverter. Um, and it saves, mainly it saves a ton on cost. Oh, sure. um, and it, it allows you to get to that 205 a watt without, um, you know, sacrificing much for production um, overall, you know. Um, so really, I mean, you know, we can, if you guys wanted to look into micros and optimizers, I could, you know, run an analysis on what that would look like. It just, it does kind of balloon costs when you're talking about, you know, 355 optimizers that can handle a 72 cell panel. Um, all of a sudden that kind of changes the, the dynamic quite a bit. Um, but they, they all come with rapid shutdown. So it's all, you know, electrical co compliant. The strings aren't that long. So if we needed to service a panel, you know, it's not like we're looking at 50 panel strings to determine which panel is the issue. Plus it's a flat roof. So it's incredibly accessible, um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of reasons why, um, you know, you'd want to go this route or we would recommend to go this route. Um, but uh, that'll all be, you know, you know, obviously within the, um, you know, the proposal and, and, you know, the material warranty stuff and all that packet that we'll, we'll get you guys. But um, let me know if you want to see micros or optimizers. It's just, that's probably going to be kind of hard to, to keep, get full offset and, and stay under budget um, if, if we add that. Well, certainly not for me. I, that's a good choice, I think, to use. Yeah, the, just once you get to that kind of, you know, well, it's well over 100 kilowatts. I mean, really, that's kind of, yeah. it just becomes a, 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 a cost benefit ratio um and it just i don't think it's a i don't think it's worth what you get for the extra cost considering we're still going to get so much great production out of this yeah um, plus there's a huge advantage in the simplicity so right you know it, it adds a it adds a lot of that um as well you know there's there's just a lot of reasons once you get to this scale 
you know, um, especially with a flat roof because it's very accessible, you know. Right. Um, you need to make any, you know, swap out any panels. Hey, Rob. Yeah. R related to uh, getting snow off of panels, and I don't know if the township would ever do this, you know, because <laughs> it's a pain. Sure. But, you know, is it feasible in that sort of situation with so many panels to actually, if they wanted to, to go up and brush the snow off? Because I'm just thinking this is a yeah, pretty you, big you know, array. Right. You know, I wouldn't see why it wouldn't be. Um, you know, it, it, it's, um, okay. you know, obviously, you know, if we wouldn't want people, um, don't mess with the wires, you know, don't, don't uh, go underneath the panels for any reason. Um, things are the way they are for a reason, but I mean, brushing the snow off though, I mean, they're like, once again, they're extremely accessible. Um, I don't see any reason why they, they wouldn't be able to do that. Um, there's that, you know, there's that roof hatch, just pop up there, go down the line and, and sweep them off. There you go. Um, I mean, I, 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 it would be a good job for Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it, w it would be, it wouldn't be that hard. I mean, it's a lot of panels, you know, um, but uh, if you went up and down the line and just, you know, with, with a brush, it doesn't have to be perfect, but yeah, that would be helpful um, for those kind of worst parts of winter. That's for sure. Oh, you know, what we need is drones that sweep off solar panels. Right. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I've seen yeah. some stuff. I'm that looking would... into some things on They're They're more for like, you know, multi megawatt projects. Mm -hmm. um but where they're they have robots that get attached to the tops of the panels yeah. and this is where they're all flush yeah and they like roll across and clean them um yeah and, so room, a solar off. Roomba like just right. like a Roomba for your house exactly yeah the only thing is is with these um flat roof ballast system mounts um they you know they this machine would have to somehow jump because there'd be gaps um, so I'm not quite sure. It would have to be like a, like a drone where it can hover maybe or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, Hey, um, that's, that's, that's it's, a, if you could patent it's an opportunity for somebody. Right. Right. Yeah. And any other questions for Rob? And uh, I have one question. Uh, which of you would like to see the proposal when it comes in? Yeah. I can attach or CC anybody on it. Well, I'd like to. Okay. Sure. In, 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 What'd you say, John? Oh, I was just gonna say, so so you haven't officially uh, submitted the proposal yet, right? No, um, I mean, we're, we're basically putting the finishing touches on it today. Um, and then uh, it is a big document. So if we send it electronically, we'll have to do some sort of Dropbox share or a Google share drive um, to, to get it all in one. Um, but uh, yeah, we plan to do that, uh, you know, later today or you know tomorrow morning the latest if you send it uh to me first i can if it's a pdf i can might be able to con compress it a little bit okay um but i can also put it on a, a shared spot. yeah do you, i mean for us to get it all in one you know just one document i think i would have to do a google share or some sort of a share with okay you. i can if i can put it together um, then you can download it in its entirety um, you know, from there and compress it. Um, I can try to see if I can compress it um, prior. Um, yeah. Sorry, image quality. Whatever's easiest for you, Rob. At, um, okay. Well, but, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I do, I want to get it to you in one, just, you know, one document so it doesn't come in like 10 pieces. Yeah, I can do that in Adobe if you just send me the pieces and tell me the order. Um, okay. So whatever works for you. Yeah, I'll, um, I mean, is a share drive okay? Yep. If you do, yep, okay. That's fine. Uh, okay. Do Do either of you have a, a sense for when uh, uh, construction might start? Um. Well, in 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 the um, proposal, what we've basically put in there is that uh, you know timeline could be a, you know agreed upon with Meridian Township. So we kind of would take your cue, you know, um, as far as you know. Obviously, we got to go through the permitting process and stuff, um, and that's going to take a little while. But you know, um, all that considered. If, you know, if, if we wanted to move on it, we could two months, you know, um, something like that, just material procurement and, you know, getting permits and everything in line, um, you know, wouldn't be terribly long. Um, mainly we, we, we're going to, you know, go off of what you guys, um, you know, what your goals were on that. Um, you know, the longer I think we wait and, and get into spring and summer, it's just going to get busier and busier, you know, um, but uh, it's still sort of ahead of that in February. 
you know, so if, if we did want to kind of get things moving, we could block off part of the spring schedule, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, and then, you know, have that already planned and, and, and built in um, for the guys. Um, okay. But yeah, it'd be nice to catch summer sun. That, that's for sure. Great. Thank you so much, Rob. Yeah, of um, any other final questions for Rob? Um, awesome. Look forward to that. Look forward yeah. to sharing it. And um, yeah, appreciate your team team effort there. It's, yeah, yeah. Dan's now. definitely put in a lot of work on it. So, um, you know, he's excited to get it to you guys as well. So. Great. Um, I don't have a lot to report on energy efficiency front, although I did talk to uh, Rob McKenzie, our building manager. We're trying to get a walkthrough to, to um, get LED lighting for the public safety building. Um, got a, a, a supplier that uh, looks like a good possibility, but we're still waiting for a bid and the walkthrough. Um, we're also looking at benchmarking our major energy using bills. And we, we did get a proposal, um, which was basically taking our last couple of years of data and putting it into um, the uh, portfolio manager, uh, Energy Star program. Um, what they did not include was sort of an ongoing benchmarking, which we'd hope to, to have. Uh, we may be able to do some of that in house. So we're trying to get a, an updated proposal on that from EcoWorks. And I also approached um, Planet Footprint and they have not responded. So I'm not sure how active they are in the US these days, but open to other suggestions if, if we need to get a, a second bid on uh, to help us with energy benchmarking. Um, let's see, some of you met Bernie at our last meeting. She's just a dynamo and she's quite familiar with ex using Excel. So I'm, I'm excited that we might be able to do some of this more in-house in, in the months to come. Anywho, um, do we, any questions about that? Um, what I will probably do is just share the, the proposal with you in our minutes. Um, and if you have any other questions related to the benchmarking um, or energy efficiency suggestions, please let me know. Can we move on to climate, citizens climate commitment? Um, John? Yeah, no, I think everybody, but probably not Valerie. Valerie, you didn't get any related to this topic, did you? I don't think so. Okay, let me give you a brief introduction then. It, 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 this came out of a, uh, a webinar or meeting I participated in. It, it basically, uh, the idea is that, you know, as we deal with the climate emergency, we have to start talking about uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, when we replace equipment, uh, you know, whether it's furnaces or hot water heaters, vehicles, that we need to start thinking about uh, uh, getting rid of natural gas and, and gasoline too, for that matter. Uh, so it's basically on the lines of electrify everything, you know, because people have been talking about that. Uh, and so this, this kind of concept is basically the idea that uh, we would ask the township uh, residents to make a, a commitment, uh, a citizen's climate commitment now the commitment, uh, you know, I have a, a number of questions related to this that I've been kind of uh, need some help in thinking through. Uh, and I got some good comments from Roger that have kind of raised some new issues, which I think is, is good too. Uh, but uh, uh, the idea is not to, uh, some of these programs, basically people make a pledge to buy electric uh, alternatives. I, I thought that didn't sound right to me at this point in time. So the, the me, the, the, uh, the commitment is basically to consider electric alternatives at the time of replacement or failure. And people make a commitment to basically, because uh, uh, a lot of times when something fails, you don't have a lot of time to do research. Uh, people make a commitment to kind of think about, okay, if, if my furnace failed or, you know, when I want to buy a new, new car, should I go, you know, to, to the electric alternative. So, so that's basically the idea. Uh, and 
let's see. Uh, you know, I got a series of questions, but before we get into that, uh, maybe any of you have questions or comments uh, related to the whole idea. I'm kind of uh, entering the conversation a little late, but um, I like the idea that this is an educational opportunity. It, it kind of um, puts the energy team back on the PR radar. Um, it might be something that our communications department could pick up on and it just gets people thinking about energy in a creative way. So thanks for putting your energy into this. No pun intended. One, one thing I was thinking is, um, you know, I could talk to um, my contact at Michigan Saves, uh, that financing program, because um, I know they do, you know, part of it is not only renewable energy, but it's also for efficiency upgrades. I think usually that's more geared towards like retrofits, you know, things like that on the home, um, doing like an energy audit tied to that. But I mean, if you're talking about replacing with efficient appliances, I mean, I don't see why that wouldn't fall under that category of, you know, an efficiency of improvement. I think you might have to show that it's like, you know, a certain efficient, you know, quality or standard. Um, but I'd like to think that could be something Michigan Saves could actually kind of advertise for as well for those large, um, you know, large purchases. Um, and then assuming that they, you know, yes, this qualifies, um, that could be something where, you know, we could have the, a link to the Michigan Saves site, you know, right, right there with it give people a direct route um, to somewhere where they can actually, you know, look into financing. And Michigan Saves is only Michigan banks. It's all credit unions. They give really favorable rates, um, you know, depending on, um, you know, which program you, you pick. So I don't know. I think that's a, one way we can supplement this information to give people, you know, an avenue to, to possibly look into funding, you know. Um, oh, yeah. And Yep. Depending on if they're BWL too, then they could also try to get like efficiency, um, you know, rebates and stuff like that too for, for any of these things um, for those yeah, who are over on 27. Yeah, what, you, what you'll what you see in the draft material too is, is I do have a reference to Michigan Saves because okay. anybody, I, I didn't do the Lansing Board of Water and Light because I, I thought at least the initial focus would be just Meridian Township. Oh, and so of course. The only thing I've got really... Uh, mentioned is there is some uh, rebates from consumers energy uh in federal tax credits for that matter too uh, yeah i'll have to i could talk to my my contact there at michigan saves though and see if if how much the program is is either accepting of other you know pieces of equipment not just geothermal for financing um because there's so many like you know as the list you, you put that together there's a lot of other pieces of um you know home appliance equipment that you know, um, could have this improvement and get off of gas and stuff. So I'd like to think that they would fund yeah. finance things beyond geothermal because some of these things are big investments too, you know, if you, especially if you do more than one. No, I, I think they do because I, I think their basic approach is to, uh, you know, they have a lot, a lot of some of it is energy efficiency contractors go into the homes or businesses, right? And they come up with a list of five or six or seven things that become a, a package usually right. of efficiency, but it could be efficiency plus solar or, or geothermal or whatever. So yeah, I think I think they uh, will do a lot of different uh, stuff. Good, I'd like to think they would, you know, that's all efficiency, yeah. you know, okay. Right. They'll um, do insulation, they'll do furnaces, they'll, I think, do almost anything that saves energy. I don't know about uh, like dryers and stoves. Now that's that's kind of, yeah, those smaller yeah. pieces. I'm wondering if you wrap them all together and it's like, you know, here is my total bill for all of these different efficiency improvements. I'd like to finance it as a package. So is that what possible? Are, what are some of your questions, John? Oh, uh, well, one is just the concept of, you know, a lot of these programs uh, around the, the country, there aren't a lot of them, but there are some basically make people make a pledge to do it basically. And, and I've kind of softened it to just consider. And I just, you know, want to get some feedback on whether the, uh, the softer approach kind of makes sense. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, if I went to this page and I'm reading this thing through and I say, well, I got to, I'm promising to buy this and I haven't even looked into it. So I'm not signing up because uh, who knows? And uh, not that, 
anybody would take you to court. But that's why I just thought that uh, a commitment to think about is, 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 is not, I wouldn't think would be a very big barrier to folks to kind of say, oh yeah, I'll think about it, why not? <laughs> Maybe it can be kind of cake and eat it too. You know, for those who want to think about it, that's great. You know, for those who are, or who are ready to, to, you know, make the pledge, then go ahead and do that too. You know, and so it's kind of, you know, encouraging both. Uh, that's a good you know, idea. Just because those who are willing to make a pledge, I encourage them to, you know. Um, I like that. Yeah. What was what it? Yeah. Absolutely. What does everybody think? Uh, just kind of cover all our bases. A bit. Yeah, that, and that can easily be done. It can be a kind of a two different types of uh, mm -hmm. pledges or uh, kind of a, uh, a basic pledge and then an additional pledge that I've already thought. Yeah. About and then this. those who are thinking about it, you know, maybe they come around and you know what, I want to go all in on this. And then they, yeah. then they, they make the pledge after they've thought about it for a while, you know, or looked into something. I think you might have uh, people who are willing to do it for some items and not for others. Yeah. And then also I was wondering about a section for small things like snow blowers and uh, mowers. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I hadn't thought about those. <laughs> We've had good luck. We have a, a small yeah. electric snow blower and it's right. surprisingly effective. And then we have a, a mower and it's great. And the mower is um, cordless. The snow blower has a, got a 25 foot cord, but it works great. Yeah. Roger, you know all about that, right? You have a bunch of the uh, electric. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. all electric. I have no gas powered equipment anymore and it's just absolutely wonderful. And there's, I know a lot of different things there too. So yeah, I mean, that that's probably a lot of those people don't even realize you can buy them electric, you know? Um, so I think, yeah, maybe a secondary list for a lot of the small stuff that you might not think of. I can see that. It's useful to have the small folk. engines off of the, just out gone because they're so polluting compared right. to modern uh, car engines or the in fact, even compared to modern power plants, the small engines are the very worst. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So it's almost like, yeah, the, the, the product of all those small things is actually, you know, um, yeah, a bigger so issue. Brought that up, Joanne. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, I'm to think what yeah. else falls in that uh, area. Snowblowers, so, mowers. Yeah, those are Weed whacker. Uh, yeah, I've got Roger, what, you got a ton of stuff. Weed yeah, whacker that's electric. That's you can, that's yeah. That's yeah. That's the whole, whole schmear, anything you Anything power tool nowadays, you can buy cordless electric. So, <laughs> do, do they use uh, uh, fossil fuels for some of the? I mean, uh, some things are probably just pretty much always electric, but uh, certainly not mowers and snow blowers. Yeah. Well, you can buy really. You know, the most green option is the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Oh, this last one though, I was so grateful to have the little yeah. wimpy snowblower. Yikes. Uh, it's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Our neighbor saw me out there shoveling and offered her snowblower, but I just don't like the, it just, the gas smell just, yeah. Okay, yeah moving, I, I love moving. shoveling. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the, this, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. Second question I have is, uh, you know, a lot of these websites, our programs uh, really push the fact that if you have a gas stove, you're, you're, you're really bad news. It's really polluting, which I kind of never thought about. It, I guess it kind of makes sense if you have an open flame, there's always uh, some, you know, uh, emissions. Uh, but, uh, and so I, I kind of did mention it uh, under the stove portion. Uh, and, you know, it may be controversial for some people. I don't know, just pushing that, but I, I was, uh, I didn't beat it to death, but I, I did mention it under the uh, the stove part because it obviously it's an open flame, right, for stoves. One thing to consider, though, is that that may be an option for some people if they lose power. Uh, boy, you know that's that's a that's an interesting uh, uh, problem, though, because you know everything we're talking about, right? Right, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> Bit. It's a wreck. It kind of like it. It all yeah. becomes electric, so everything is gone <laughs> once you have a power outage, right? Well, yeah. So that's uh, oh. that's a good point, though. Yeah, I thought of one other uh, leaf blowers. Oh, okay. 
Aren't those usually gas and chainsaws? I don't chainsaw, know. leaf blower, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but chainsaw. leaf blower is something that definitely people use right a lot around here. Yeah, like an actual common. I was gonna say like oh, oh wood chipper, but who's using that, right? I mean, <laughs> how often? Some uh, printer. Maybe. Okay. Um, uh, moving on. Uh, question number three. Um, you know, when I was looking at converting hot, the gas hot water heater, uh, I was looking at both the uh, uh, heat pump water heaters and the uh, on-demand electric, uh, you know, and uh, my, my question is basically, should we include the on-demand electric water heaters? Uh, I'll tell you what the issue is that uh, uh, the heat pump water heaters are a lot more efficient, okay? probably get some savings with the on-demand uh, uh, electric water heaters because you don't have the, the, the losses from the tanks. Uh, but from what I was looking at, uh, there is real issues with uh, flow rates with electric on-demand heaters. Uh, and so, uh, you know, for in my situation where I'm just by myself and I, <laughs> uh, you know, I, it wouldn't, I probably could have managed okay with just an electric on-demand water heater. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is it is kind of a downside. Uh, the only downside I saw with the uh, uh, heat pump water heaters was that you, you can't have them in an enclosed space because they're basically capturing uh, heat from your air. And so you can't have them in a little room because they need a, a, a certain amount of space to kind of capture the energy from the air. And also they're a little taller than a typical hot water heater. So, you, you know, I guess you need about seven foot, but I don't think that's a big deal. But, you know, the, uh, um, so, you know, I, I don't know, it's just an open question. The, uh, the electric, I guess it wouldn't be any, any downside to including electric uh, demand water heaters. But uh, in, in my kind of research, it seemed like the, the heat pump water heaters were a be better alternative for almost everybody. Well, only thing I'd say there is that there are, you know, like, a, I mean, just speaking from personal experience, a lot of, you know, utility rooms, places where you think you would want to put something like that can be kind of packed. People have, you know, yeah. small spaces. Um, so, you know, I, I think there will be a plenty of, of, of examples of people where they just don't have, um, you know, the right setup for one or the other. Um, so my vote would be to, you know, maybe in include both just, in, you know, to give people the option. Um, but, uh, cause it doesn't seem like there's really a, as far as for the, the ultimate goal of this, that there isn't really a reason or downside to either in particular, um, just depending well, on the situation. One of the issues is the payback time. Mm. I mean, a lot of people are spending maybe five or 10 bucks a month on their natural gas water heater it takes a long time to pay for if any I don't even know if there is a payback where you spend seventeen hundred dollars on a heat pump water heater uh, yeah, well, five uh, bucks a month yeah. actually Leroy I'm glad you brought that up because you know the problem with this overall issue is the price of natural gas is so cheap uh, that a lot of this stuff uh, does not have good economics like if you just approach somebody and said you know you should do this because it's a great deal it, it isn't a great deal <laughs> the 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 real reason why people would want to do this is they're making a, a climate commitment uh and they're making a purchasing something that's going to last 10 15 20 years and of course the price of natural gas will go up the price of electricity will go up too so uh yeah i mean, I mean that's i don't think there's any doubt about that that uh uh, you know, the economics and natural gas is cheap, basically. Mm -hmm. But what about the embodied energy is pretty significant too, isn't it? I mean, I'm not trying to be the uh, devil's advocate or anything. Oh, no, please. Yeah. Well, now, embodied energy, though, that's why we're talking about people not retrofitting, but uh, making the change at the time of replacement. At the time of replacement. Yeah, yeah the, the, the whole idea is set up that you know, don't run, you don't have to run out and re replace your five-year-old water heater. It's just that it, you know, it's going to die in the next five or 10 years. So at that time you should, uh, and so that, you know, that's going to be a, a given that uh, uh, 
the embodied energy wouldn't, I don't think, be a, a deal uh, in that situation. Probably be important too to, to mention kind of the, the um, upside of, hey, your water's hot instantly, right? I mean, oh, right. isn't that kind of the selling point for those? Is it the- For the on demand, yeah. Right. right. You know, oh, I'm, I'm in a hurry to get to work and literally you turn the water on and it's immediately whatever temperature you want. So to some people that's that there's a value in that, you know? Um, so, but yeah, the payback is going to be a tough, that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, you know, Roger had raised a, a, an issue uh, uh, about renters. And so, uh, and uh, so we, we have electric vehicles in there now and that, that helps with the, uh, uh, the kind of the, the non-homeowners uh, and, and also uh, uh, in kind of a related issue, I, I do include in both the commitment and in the uh, kind of opening uh, mention about energy efficiency that really, of course, the smartest thing to do is energy efficiency, of course, which is every, anybody can do that. And so that's kind of part of the commitment too that you're com committing to uh, do as much energy efficiency as possible and at the time of replacement by electric alternatives. So uh, uh, I assume no, no, every, you know, we're, we're expanding what's covered. So I assume everybody believes we should include electric vehicles. Uh, and let's see, number five was about renters. Uh, number six was uh, the grid's not renewable yet. And, and that, uh, I think that was a really good issue that, that Roger raised. And so, uh, and I hadn't been very explicit about that. In the latest draft, uh, I basically talk about that issue and how the, the grid is gradually getting more renewable over time. And so, uh, you know, one could make a case that, well, you know, I'll wait till it's really renewable <laughs> before I, you know, uh, start buying electric stuff. But of course, then, you know, if we all wait, then, then it's, it's, that's a problem too, because 2030 is coming up real quick. So uh, that's kind of a, I, I did talk about that in the opening. Uh, uh, now, Roger, uh, uh, what's your, because you initially raised these concerns. Do you have any kind of follow-up thoughts? In your last draft, I thought you did a really good job of, uh, of looking at those issues. And I, uh, I, I think it looks good. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, la last question is, uh, well, you know, how, uh, if we do this, uh, you know, I don't think there's no cost involved. We'll have to be active in kind of promoting the concept, getting people to sign up. Uh, it would be targeted at Meridian Township, but obviously if other people want to sign up, that's fine too. Uh, and, uh, you know, we would, uh, probably use our green neighbor network to kind of get information out, uh, you know, all the kind of typical ways we promote things. Maybe we could promote it through some of the churches we worked with at the, uh, uh at, at our uh, go solar program. Uh, but what, what's, do people have any, well, any, any further thoughts or questions on the content, but also any ideas about, uh, you know, how we would, uh, market publicize this? Um, well, one thing, you know, I think that that um, I could help with is getting this information in the hands of some of the, um, you know, church leaders that we've done solar systems for, because that's, those are communities where people are um, very much, you know, behind, behind this, um, like, you know, University Lutheran, Islamic Center, Grace Lutheran, I mean, those all have decent size um, congregations, you know, especially University of Lutheran, a really big church. So is, you know, is the Islamic Center is a huge community as well. Um, and I think you'd find, you'd find a lot of people um, who are all local that, um, you know, would definitely be interested in, 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 in joining this. So that's, that's, that's one, one thought mm -hmm. or one place we could go. Um, you know, Mission, uh, the uh, Interfaith Power and Light organization, um, getting that information in their hands too, I think then you could really, I mean, obviously that would then go way beyond um, Meridian Township because that's a big program, but that would be an organization that I think would promote something like this, you know? Um, maybe there are other organizations that would promote something like this. It's um, a thought. Yeah, well, uh, Michael could help us with, uh, you know, you've got contacts with some churches. We worked with some 
uh, churches on our workshop program. So, but there may be other churches that uh, Michael can kind of help us reach out to to kind of become part of this effort, right? And uh, and Leroy, a question for you. Uh, what what I'm assuming is that you know we have and maybe we talked about this last time. We, we have this on a website somewhere, and uh, that it wouldn't be hard for people to kind of. Uh, sign up actually on the website, just type in their name, basically. Is that, do you, do you see any issues with having this material? Once obviously we get approvals, because uh, I'm assuming uh, that, you know, the next step is if everybody's comfortable with this is we'll go to the environmental commission and then from the environmental commission at some point to the township board, uh, just so everybody's on board. <laughs> and uh, also hopefully everybody signs up and tells their neighbors. Because it would be really nice to have a, a lot of the environmental commissioners and township uh, board members actually be folks who who sign up and make the uh, the pledge or commitment. Uh, yeah, social media, um, you know, uh, I think not only the you know the the go to social medias, but I, I think Nextdoor seems to be a, a, a really popular rising um, you know platform that would get it out into you know local neighborhoods and stuff. That's you know another option. I'm not, I'm not sure if we would use a form or a survey or a, like constant contact like we did with the uh, Green Neighbors, but um, yeah, I can check with our communications department about that. Some of that sign up stuff is new to me, relatively new, if it's not a mailing list type of thing. Um, the other group, um, Valerie and John know about the Capillary Sustainability Partnership maybe that maybe it could be a regional a regional interest to some other communities and that might be fun to kind of just show some collaboration with Lansing East Lansing Williamstown um, township etc so that's could be further down the line but just um, they're always interested in what we're up to yeah, I see, and I see that further down the line because I think what's what would be helpful for is to if you know Meridian Township to try this and maybe probably learn from our experience and see what works and what doesn't work and and then you know at that like you say Leroy down the road we can kind of share our experience that uh, you know it uh, uh, it worked real well or maybe we won't share our experience because maybe it won't go well you know uh, and you know just kind of see what happens yeah. Sounds good. Thanks yeah. for taking this uh, taking this along, moving this forward, John and Roger and everybody else. Good suggestions, well, Rob. You know what I'll do next is uh, I'll do a, a, a next draft, uh, incorporate all the, the good suggestions from today, and then just ask for further feedback back. And then uh, maybe at the next environmental commission meeting or uh, you know, at least introduce the idea and get people talking about it. Because uh, it probably <clears throat> would, if we, Leroy, if we introduced it at the next environmental commission meeting, uh, you know, I think we'd want to give people another month or so to think about it before we actually uh, suggested that we move it along to the township board. When you're talking that timeline, it seems like Earth Week or Earth Day might be a interesting timing. Oh, good point. We we might be able to do that. Don't worry, right? Just thinking out loud of those types of activities that might be going on. Oh, that would be that would be super. Yeah, I think that's the twenty second of April. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, and uh, I guess there's an educational effort, right? Getting people think stuff. But uh, one of the advantages, oh, hi, Tom. Uh, one of the advantages is that uh, there's really no cost to speak of, <laughs> which is, is always a plus, you know. Uh, hey, Tom, your timing is perfect. Welcome. Thank you. I'd like you to believe it. Perfect timing. We we're just wrapping up discussion about the citizens climate commitment and uh, some of you know Tom already. Um, but Tom, what are you up to these days? 
Um, there's so many things going on in my world that it's, um, you know, a little bit hard to describe everything, but um, let's see, I'm working on equity crowd investing and how it is that we open up um, Michigan projects to equity crowd investing. Uh, obviously, to me, good energy projects and good food projects are inherently lending themselves towards the kinds of opportunities that exist through equity crowd investing. I started working in 2013 before the law passed in Michigan, uh, trying to get people to understand that we could set this up and run multi-millions of dollars worth of good projects through uh, small investors wanting to put their money into what they know to be good projects and earn a small return on investment for that. Well, it's now turned into a multi-million dollar uh, nationwide activity. So we no longer have to worry about invest investing in our own development of our own internet platform for offering those things. That's done now by a company called Raise Green. They're a dot org, I believe, raisegreen.org. And one of their early project sponsors is a group called NEIF, National Energy Investment Fund. So they're starting to pour money uh, into projects that involve fixing up low income buildings uh, for on a shared savings basis with the building owners and operators, and then paying their investors 5% annual returns for being smart enough to put their money into those projects. Um, this can be done with self-directed IRA money uh, at any scale from you know $25 on up to $100,000, whatever people want to invest. And um, the opportunities are potentially staggering, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars per year in projects to fix energy waste. So that's one of my hobbies, trying to get that going in Michigan. Uh, on bill financing for utilities. Um, Holland, as you know, has been doing that a little bit. Traverse City has now started it. Of course, they're doing it with their own sources of money, which means that they're restricting the projects to a very, very small pool of available money that they're treating as if it's a revolving loan of account. Um, that can also be opened up to the equity crowd investing and offers an, another pathway to that. I'm working on microgrid policy for the country in two different dimensions. One is um, working with Department of Energy on their plans for microgrid policy development nationwide in the US, but also in the developing world where there is no wide area grid, the topic of what people call remote mini grids also has potentially all of the same regulatory questions that we face here where there already is a grid, just a little bit different because you don't start with a grid that's there to begin with and then carve microgrids out of it. You bring the whole thing in the form of a mini grid to a new community. And so I've been working on policies involved with that. Um, we've got a contract to do work on carbon capture and, and utilization and beneficial usage and storage of carbon eventually, um, trying to help the federal government to understand the regulatory implications involved in what happens as we start to uh, watch our utility companies engaging one way or another in being part of the answer to the climate crisis and you know what's the pathway to making that happen. Uh, those are just the things I can think of off the top of my head at this moment. Thank you for that quick five minute synopsis. That's uh, it's amazing and expanding our imagination. I'm, I can see some fireworks going off in everyone's heads. Um, we we try and keep these meetings to uh, to about an hour. We've pretty much finished our agenda, but does anybody have any questions for Tom or um, do you have any questions for us? Well, I'm curious what's hot on your agenda now. And of course, I just saw the fabulous article in the City Pulse that makes it sound like forward progress might become a reality here. Um, that was encouraging to see. Uh, are there particular project areas that the township is engaged in? Well, 
thanks to work on from Valerie, Joanne, Heidi, who probably had to step off for another meeting, Rob, Roger, John, we've got, you know, some pretty knowledgeable and leaders in our community that have been mostly responsible for uh, over a decade ago, Judy Kindle, you know, um, uh, committing to the mayor's climate change agreement. And then more recently, um, kind of developing a, a climate action plan, which has been, I can share with you, it's sort of been our model for a roadmap for some of the projects that we've been involved with. And there's like 80 different objectives as part of that. And some of them we've made more progress on than others. But um, Rob, who's in our meeting today, is working on 120 kilowatt or 130 kilowatt solar array that we're hoping to launch get going in a few months on our public safety building. And that would be one of our more visible projects, but we're also simultaneously working on energy efficiency types of things and some public orient public education, this cli citizens climate commitment, which John and Roger have been tweaking. We're hoping to maybe kick off around Earth Day. But what else would people add to that little my three minute synopsis? Would you, um, we've obviously, you've probably seen some of our solar arrays We've made a fair amount of progress in the last couple of years, thanks to people like Rob and John and Roger. Um, and then the, the my solar stories have involved several, several um, households. Um, you probably tuned into some of those, Tom. Anybody want to add anything or subtract anything from what I've said? No, the only thing I'll mention now is in this relates to the larger Lansing area, uh, you know, the township has been participating in what's called now the Capital Area Sustainability Partnership, which is actually involving a lot of the local governments in the area to kind of exchange information about you know, sustainability issues. Uh, and that's actually just kind of relatively soon or relatively recently gotten off the ground. Uh, and I, let's see, you got MSU and uh, City of Lansing, uh, Tri-County Regional Planning Commission are kind of taking leadership roles and kind of facilitating that. So I think that was a, a good step too. More recently, we're also um, working on a green infrastructure audit, um, kind of looking at removing barriers to doing, to planting native plants, green gardens and stuff like that. And that looks like it's gonna take a regional um, uh, regional scope as well, which we're excited about. Anyway, um, Tom, you're welcome. Anytime uh, we meet once a month, and if you want to put something on our agenda or would like to come speak to our environmental commission, we have a green theme at the beginning of each um, month of our environmental commission, and it only t takes up the first half hour, and then you can leave. It's on Zoom. But it would be, I think it'd be neat to, to for you to expand our imagination. Well, that either, yeah, let me know how to keep track of that. And then I work with the Lansing Environmental Action Team. And, um, you know, they're trying to watch what's going on all around the area and, and be involved where they can. So if I'm not able to participate, maybe one of them could participate. Also, just yesterday, I had my first discussion with Potter Park Zoo with the, um, director of the zoo about using them as a proving grounds for all different kinds of things that could be done in terms of fixing up their energy uses, uh, processing their wastes, putting solar on the buildings and so forth. So the, that discussion is going to take place at the Ingham County level, because I know that they're, you know, embarked on trying to figure out what they can do. And I'm really hopeful that we can use the zoo as a very, very public place to put things and help teach the community about what's available. And again, the premise of that discussion is use other people's money, no money down, only savings for the zoo and uh, do everything we can on that basis. Awesome. Um, well, speaking of getting together again, do we want to, are people good with um, next month on the 
let's see, that March 18th would be a month from now. Yeah, it should, should work. I think tentatively, do people like to prefer the 12 o'clock time or 11 o'clock? This was fine. Either one's fine with me as long as I read my email. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, why don't Looks we good to me. tentatively make it at noon on, on the 18th of March. And uh, Tom, I'd hate to distract you from all those great things that you're doing, but you're welcome to join us um, anytime, as you know. All right. Thank you very much. I certainly might. And to see everybody that hey, I know and do, meet people I didn't know. If you have a newsletter that you um, where you report on some of this, or maybe the Lansing Energy Action Network, Environmental Action Network, but. Um, it's a good way to find out more about what you're doing, but it's just appreciate the snapshot. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. You have a beautiful background there too, Leroy. Thanks. <laughs> Is Bernie your new advisor, Tom? Yeah, you see him that, in the background. Isn't that nice? We're in the That's recording great. studio together. Um, by the way, um, we have two openings on our environmental commission. We have three applicants so far. I'll forward those out with the next environmental commission meeting. But I see Valerie submitted her application, and um, got a couple others too. So great to see you, everyone. And Tom, thanks for nice to see hey, your smiling face. Nice to have an invite. Thank you. See you later, Hi, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. John, did you have anything else? Oh, okay.